Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. I'm going to make a few videos this afternoon. It's a Sunday afternoon and I've got an hour to spare uh, before my uncle comes around and we have a Bible study and then we go off to church. Um, so I just, I'm going to make a few videos, of three or four videos um, in the hour. And um, I'd like to do just read uh, something. I just offer a few thoughts on it because I think it's important. Hope everybody's okay. <coughs> so let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. Lord, I just praise and give you the glory today. And I just pray this reading will be a blessing to people, Lord, in your name. Amen. It said, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called who were loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ, mercy and peace and love be yours in abundance. Sorry. Just, um, just have my dinner. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about salvation we share, I felt... I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once and for all entrusted to the saints. A certain man whose condemnation was written about long ago had been secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who change the grace of God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign and Lord. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt but later destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their portions of authority but abandoned their own home. These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. The very same way, these dreamers pollute their own bodies, reject authority and slander celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring a slanderous accusation against him, but said, <coughs> The Lord rebuke you. Yet these men speak abusively against whatsoever they do not understand, and what things they do understand by instinct. Like unreasoning animals, these are the very things that destroy them. Woe to them, they have taken the way of Cain, they have rushed for profit into Balaam's error, they have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These men are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you with the slightest qualm, without the whitest, slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves, they are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit and uprooted twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea foaming up their shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been served forever. Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men, See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they have done in the ungodly way and of all the harsh words ungodly sinners as spoken against him. These men are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil <coughs> desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. But dear friends, remember, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> but dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are men who divide, divide you, who follow their natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them to others. Show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and without great jo with great joy. 
to the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and evermore. Amen. <clears throat> First of all, I, I feel that this book's really important for today. I feel that it says earlier on, It says, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once and for all entrusted to the saints. And I really believe that, my friends, today, that the Church of Jesus Christ needs to contend for the faith. And at the moment, I don't see a lot of contending. I don't see a lot of people standing up for Jesus Christ, even in the church, my friend. There are many heresies and many things that have come into the church of Jesus Christ, and I'm on about the Anglicans, the Methodists, the Baptists, even Evangelical. There are things that have come in, and the people of God are not standing up against the errors of the time. And that's going to be a very dangerous thing, because if the church corrupts, then that means the church is going to end up on the margins and is going to not have the influence that it needs to reach the lost and needy in these days. Dear friends, although I was very e eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once entrusted to the saints. He's saying, we have a salvation. We have a gospel. Do you remember in Galatians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul says, Cursed is anyone who preaches not the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is Christ took the wrath that I and you deserve. He died on that cross. He was punished for our sin. And he died on that cross so that we might have salvation. And he is the divine human saviour. In God, in Christ, is God all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. This is our salvation. This is our faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and every pastor and every preacher and every elder and every leader in a church must be willing to go through the fire for the Savior. If you're a child of God and a preacher of the gospel, you must be willing to go through the fire. If they burn you, you preach the gospel. If they kill you, you preach the gospel. You've got to be willing to lay down your life for the gospel. Because the gospel is the truth and the only hope of salvation for men and women and boys and girls today. And we are called to go through the fire today. We are called to go through the fire today, folks. The battle is not outside the church anymore. The battle is not with Islam now. It is not with the atheists now. The battle is in the church. The battle is in the church. And there's the question that the church has to face today. And that is this. Who is Lord of the church? Jesus Christ or rationalism? Jesus Christ or culture, Jesus Christ, or the state? That's a question that you need to answer as a pastor today, and as a believer. The greatest question of the hour in the church is who is in charge of the church? Is it Jesus Christ, or is it culture? Is it Jesus Christ, or the state? Is it Jesus Christ, Or rationalism. And you cannot duck this anymore. You come right now and make a decision right now. Who is in charge of the church of Jesus Christ? You make a decision now. We make a line. Those who are on the side of Christ. And those who are the enemies of Christ in the church. We make a line and that line is this. 
What line do you stand on? Are you on the line that Christ is the head of his church? Are you on the line that it's the culture that's head of the church? Or it's the state that's head of the church? Or it's rationalism that's head of the church? Who's head of the church? You make your decision today. I felt I had to write to urge to you to contend for the faith that was once entrusted to the saints. This is no time to compromise anymore. It's not the time to compromise in the church anymore. We can't afford to compromise anymore. For too long the church of God in America and in the UK and in Europe is, has been compromising with the world. We've compromised with the world's ideas, the world's standards, the world's thinking. And it's killing the church. And the church is either going to get judged and God's going to judge the church and even now the judgment has come. Or the church will come forth and burst forth with new energy in preaching the word of God. But today is the day that you make a decision. Today is the day the judgment comes or the blessing falls. But today it stops. Today the rot stops. Today is the day you begin to contend for the faith once delivered for the saints. He said, Jay, I think you're being extreme. Jay, you're a nobody. Jay, I don't have to listen to you. Jay, I'm not interested in what you're saying. Jay, I think it's extreme. Jay, so what? I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once and for all entrusted to the saints. You're not arguing with me. You're not dismissing me. You're arguing with the word of God and you're dismissing God. And God tells you, you need to contend for the faith. You've got to do it. It's no good in your denominations with your head down as pastors, fearing to upset the bishops and upset your, your people in your denominations because you might lose your salary, you might lose your reputation, or you might lose your manse. It's no good anymore. You can't do it anymore. Oh, I, I won't speak out. Because if I do, well, I'll lose my salary or I'll, I'll lose my ordination or I'll lose my reputation or I'll lose my man. So what? Who gives a damn about your reputation? Who gives a damn about your man? Who gives a damn? It's nothing. It's nothing. You can't take it to glory. You can't take it to be with the Lord when you die. You have been called to stand for the truth. So stand for the truth and go through the fire. Let the bishops take your job. Let them take your mans. Let them sully your reputation in the mud. Let them do it. Who are they? They are fighting against the living God. They are fighting against Almighty God. They're not fighting against you. The wrath of God will come upon them if they do. Your job as a pastor and as a leader of the church is to fear God rather than men. It is to stand for the word of God and the truth of God. Even if your blood runs through the streets. You preach and stand for the word of God and the truth of God. Earnestly contend for the faith. We go into Jude, verse 17. Dear friends, remember that the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold, they said, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. They are men who divide you, who follow mere material instinct and do not have the spirit. And there is a tsunami of voices today in the church who are puking their sick, pathetic, 
abominable teachings. They're puking it out. They're puking it out. And it's a tsunami. I heard a famous preacher in America who's the one of the most famous amongst modern evangelicals I will not name his name in America who said that homosexuality is okay. And I heard the other day another famous evangelical in the UK say that gay marriage is okay. Two evangelicals, one in America, one in the UK, famous leaders saying it's okay. You know something? They're not lone voices anymore. There's a tsunami of them coming. In the church of Jesus Christ our Lord. Evangelical church. I'll put some links to these people. So that you can go and listen to them. So you know that I'm not being extreme. you got to wake up my friends. The church is being corrupted. I say this again, the evangelical church is being corrupted. And I know what you're going to say. And I can hear the voices of the young people in the evangelical churches. And the voices go like this. Well, my friends are gay. They were born like that. Or this and that and all these issues. And there was slavery in the Bible and we don't have slavery now. So... The Bible says that gay is not right, but our culture accepts it now. So what are you going to say about that, Jay? Wake up with the times, man. You're behind the times. And I just say to you, that if you think I'm going to follow a culture, or if you think I'm going to follow a body of preachers that are puking out filth that are puking out wickedness and you think I'm going to follow them you've got another thing coming I tell you who I'm going to follow I'm going to follow Christ and I'm going to follow the apostles and I'm going to follow the Bible's teaching on the Word of God on every issue that's where I make my stand that's where you need to make your stand But you've got to know this. That the filth that's being puked out by these modern evangelical leaders at this present time is precisely that. Filth. It is away from the holiness of Christ. It is away from the majesty and the beauty of Christ. He said, Jay, but we've got to show love. We've got to be loving, Jay. Calm down. We've got to be loving. He says, but you dear friends, build yourselves up in your holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? The church is part of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God dwells in the church. And we pray in the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? It is the holiness of God. And when we talk about God's God of love, He's a God of holiness, and He wants purity in His church. Now, I'm not here to judge anybody. And I don't want to pick on this particular issue, because everybody's got sins that they struggle with and deal with and have to deal with, okay? So, I'm not, I'm not picking on this issue about gay marriage as a main issue, okay? Because, at the end of the day, you've got issues, I've got issues, we've all got issues, okay? So, I don't want it to come back at me and say, Jay, you're picking on these people. No, no. No, because if I point a finger at somebody, there's two pink fingers pointing at me, okay? No. I'm talking about that generally the church evangelical leaders are failing to stand up for the purity and holiness of the church. They are not listening to the authority of Christ. 
They are listening to the culture of their time and then they're puking the sins and filth of the culture and trying to bring it into the church. And then the church is taking it in because they're saying, oh, well, we've got to be loving and we've got to accept all this gay marriage and we've got to accept whatever the culture says because it's a loving, a loving thing to do. But the church is also believes in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit dwells in the heart of a believer and the church and the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, but he is holy. And he hates sin and he wants a pure church. And it far, God help you if you say that something is evil is good and you, get, and you say it to the Holy Spirit, the whole, you are blaspheming the Holy Spirit. He is pure and he hates sin and he will not have his church impure. And so any leaders come along and follow the culture of the day in the church and say, this is okay, and goes against the Holy Spirit, then it's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. He is a Holy Spirit. He is a Holy God. He's not just a loving God. He is a Holy God. And he demands holiness. Now that's not to say that I'm perfect or you're perfect. We've all got our weaknesses and failures. But we are to teach and to strive in the strength of God that God gives us to live a life that is pleasing to God. Okay? And it's not for you or for any pastor or any leader to teach the church that which the church does not teach. Okay? Okay? But there are people in the middle. And you've got to make a decision. Who is in charge of the church? Is it Christ? Or culture? Who is in the midst of the church? Sexual impurity? Or the Holy Spirit? And you who are in the middle... I've got to move to either one side or the other. You're either for the Holy Spirit or you're for sexual impurity and modern culture. You can't have it both ways. To say that you can have sexual impurity and the Holy Spirit and it's all okay is an absolute disgrace, it's abomination and the wrath of God will fall upon a church that, that teaches that. <coughs> but it's not just in one area about gay marriage it's other issues as well pastoral care church discipline um, practical love practical care the many many issues uh, legalism I've come in the evangelical church sorry I've got an itchy nose and the church is not making a stand Sorry. It says, Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Now, I'm, street, I'm preaching strong because sometimes in, in an age you need people who just come and they just say it between, say it. This is the problem, this is the issue, and they just say it. Okay. Now I, I've been to the I've been to two seminaries and I've been to one seminary where there are all these modern kind of evangelical or modern liberals with their modern ideas and postmodern philosophies and all that. So a lot of you out there will be in that kind of camp. You'll turn around and say, This is all time preaching and <laughs> we're a bit more sophisticated than that. Well, I've, I've had a taste of your sophistication. And it pukes, my friend. It pukes. And it pukes because it ain't built on this. The pure word of God where we walk in the sweetness and joy of the living God in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want, my friends. So you can turn around with your sophisticated psychology, your sophisticated philosophy, whatever you want. I've tasted it and it pukes. And I've tasted this, and it's sweet, 
is sweet as a honeycomb. And I love it. And I'm standing with this. And I encourage the Lord's people to walk in the word of God. And to feed on the word of God. It says, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Keep yourselves in God's love. In the heat of the battle when we're contending for the faith, this is where we've got to be very careful. We can easily get bitter and acrimonious and, and unkind. I've, I've been in a, a, a bit of a battle with the atheist over the last two years sometimes it's easy to get into that bitter mentality and you've got to watch yourself and get into the spirit of God which is love and this, the church is called to contend for the faith but it doesn't mean you contend in a nasty way it doesn't mean you contend in an unloving way you see there are lots of people say on the gay marriage issue where people are genuinely going to be struggling with issues sexual issues for example and if you come along and say I am contending for the faith ha 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 and you're as hard as nails then you're going to do damage to people because you're going to push away people who may need your support okay so when you're contending for the faith you've got to do it in a compassionate way okay you got to be willing to listen to people, get alongside people, and try and help them, try and win them. But also, okay, there's a time when you need to be firm and say, no, you as leaders in our denomination are teaching wrong and teaching error, and you've got to oppose them. And as you oppose them, you do it in a gentle, in a humble way. But that is loving. Because you are showing them that what they're doing is wrong. So in other words, make sure that you contend for the faith. Because you love Christ and you love people. Okay? The reason why I'm preaching this message is because I really do, I'm concerned for the church of God. I'm concerned that the Church of God, whether it be in the Methodist, the Baptist, the Anglican, or Evangelical or Charismatic, I believe that the Church is in peril at the present time. And this is just a little message to get people to see that they need to wake up. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be merciful to those who doubt. You see, you contend for the faith. You stand up for the truth. But there are people who doubt. There are people who doubt. So you've got to be merciful. Forgive them and, and, and realise that they're not rejecting the faith. They just have questions. Try to win them. Snatch others from the fire and save them to others show mercy mixed with fear. Hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. We're snatching people. There's a lot of people today. Who are just going in the wrong direction. And it needs you to get alongside them and say. That's the wrong way. This way. Into the word of God. I know I've spoke quite a bit. I really, really am worried about the church of Jesus Christ. The things that I've been hearing the last couple of weeks, what's been happening in America recently and in the UK, I'm ex I've am i never ever been in a, as alarmed ever in my life about the Church of Jesus Christ as I am. I really believe that the Evangelical Church in the UK and America is in grave danger. And the church needs to wake up. If you do wake up, don't fight in a bitter spirit. Keep calm. Keep strong. But contend. And be willing to pay the price. Because if you contend for the faith, 
by preaching the word of God, your bishop will defrock you. Your superintendent will take your manse away. Your evangelical parish or church may depose you from your ministry and rubbish your reputation. What are we contending for? We're contending for the gospel. Don't fight for things that are not important. We're contending for the gospel. We're contending for Christ's right to rule his church. It is not just about um, periphery issues. The major issue in the evangelical church now is the lordship of Christ as in the king of his church. Is he the king of his church or not? That is the battle now. And we are contending for the gospel. And we are contending for the purity of the church. These are the three things that we need to contend for. It doesn't mean to say that we single out one group. Don't just single out the gay marriage or anything like that. Don't single them out and persecute that issue. And be a bigot. But wherever the culture tries to come into the church and takes away the authority of Christ as king of his church, tampers with the gospel, or tries to make the church unholy and impure, you must contend for the faith. And I think there is a lot of contending need to be done. How do we contend? As pastors and preachers and leaders, you open the word of God, you pray and say, Lord, give me a message. You study the word of God and you preach his message. Whatever he says you preach, you preach. That is contending. And whatever the world brings in or whatever these worldly leaders bring in and they start teaching things that are wrong, you do Bible study and open the word of God and teach the people and say, no, these people are teaching wrong. This is what the Word of God says. That's contending. You do it in the humility. You do it in love. But you do it in boldness. And in the power of the Holy Spirit. That is contending. And that's what you have to do at the present time. And you've got to be willing to pay the price. I fear. I really fear. That we're heading for a calamity. In the churches. Because. A lot of pastors will not want to count, pay the cost. A lot of leaders and elders and deacons and, and leaders in the church, youth workers, will not want to pay the price. They will go along with the state. They will go along with the lukewarm church. And they will bow the knee to the culture of the time. They will give the culture of the time the crown. They will yield to the culture of the time. So that they can have a nice house. A nice salary. Nice reputation. I've got a BA in youth work. And I'm a youth worker. Or I, I am a reverend whatever. In, in the Anglican church. And you maintain your reputation. You maintain your manse. You maintain your salary. Because you don't want to upset people. And you want to keep these things. But you've paid the price of trampling on the truth of God and sending millions of people to hell. And I fear that millions, millions of uh, Christians in the West, thousands of pastors in the West, thousands of church leaders are going to give in to the culture of the time. I really fear that that's going to happen. It's going to happen rapidly. And I pray that it's not you. Okay. I pray that you contend for the faith. Once delivered for the saints. I'll leave a lot of resources. I'll leave some on the gay marriage issue. A couple of the leaders that have been saying things that have not been right. 
I'll leave a few links to their videos and articles. So that oops. Oh. I'll leave a link to their videos and articles so that you can get a uh, feel for what they say. Then I'll put some links to some good things about gay uh, uh, things from a biblical perspective about gay marriage uh, from preachers that will say that it's not right, it's wrong. Um, but then I'll put other links and resources on the book of Jude. So maybe you could study the book yourself, get into the book. And uh, maybe I, I can inspire you to study the book and think about these issues. Uh, I know I've been strong, but sometimes it needs people to be strong. In a time when there's a lot of compromise. Alright, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for you. In fact, let's put a, excuse me, let's put a song on. Just pray. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day and for your love and grace. Lord Jesus Christ, teach us your word. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. All those who hear your word today through this message, Father, fill them with the Holy Spirit. Give them boldness to make a stand for your truth. Give them insight into your word. Give them insight to the issues of the time. Father, help us to be loyal to you help us to be strong in your word help us to be compassionate to those who are struggling but help us to make sure that we stand up for what is right and true father give us the strength and the wisdom give each person today who's heard this message fill them with your grace bless them encourage them and strengthen them father help them not to compromise even if it costs them their own reputation or their house, or their finances. Father, help them not to compromise, but to speak out boldly for the truth. Help us to fight for the main issues, Lord, and not just the periphery issues, but to stand up for those issues where the state and even the culture are trying to change the church. Father, forgive us if we have sinned in any way or let you down. Forgive us for any failure or weakness in our lives. Father, we thank you for this day and your love and grace. And Father, I praise and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Father, I just pray that you bless these dear people. Bless them in all that they do for you. Strengthen them, fill them, encourage them, show them your love and grace. And be with them in all that they do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> if you're concerned and like me and you want to encourage each other just let me know we can always meet up and study together encourage each other if you feel the same way as I do okay but the blood of Jesus, for my
cleansing this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Keep preaching, folks.